Right, and we are finally live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Forever Rugby on Fair Sports Live. live watch along with tweet of the Cheetahs versus the Sharks. Sorry for being a little bit late. The Kings versus Lions game just, just didn't end. It never really ended. I mean, it could still be going on at this rate. It was unbelievable how long that match took. Um, so as a result, we're a little bit behind, but we have got kickoff here in Bloemfontein. Sharks versus the Cheetahs. So we'll, we'll go through the team stuff like that in, in a few minutes once we just get a bit sorted. But let's just settle in and make sure everything is working correctly before we start that. We've got the Sharks are on decent attack here, although the Cheetahs have managed to turn it around. This should be an interesting game, actually, I think, you know, and, and I think after what we saw in the, the EP versus Lions game, which was appalling, to be honest, um, hopefully we can just hope and pray for a bit for a better game because, yeah, I mean, we talk about the standard of rugby and South Africa and, the, and the fact that the standard hasn't been particularly good. And look, that's going to be inevitable, especially now in, the, in this preparation series where you consider the fact that most of the best players aren't playing very much fringe players, lots of junior players, teams who haven't played a lot of rugby together. It all doesn't bode for particularly good rugby. But at the end of the day, it's open on our screens. That's what we need to take. Um, and hopefully, you know, what I keep saying is I think, you know, it's it's important to try and look for individual performances. And and that's what you can take out of these sort of games is is sort of more the individual part as opposed to necessarily team performances and stuff like that. Because we're going to see a lot of... Um, yeah, just joining rugby and stuff like that, which is inevitable. But yeah, so just busy getting settled in. It was, a, as I said, it was just a horrible game earlier. So we were a bit, bit frantic trying to work out what was going on and stuff like that. But Sharks got a penalty here. Oh, that's a very good run. He's going to go all the way here. <laughs> it's a brilliant shot. Something out of nothing. Brilliant by the Sharks. Penalty there. And they've gone quickly. And he's just torn over the line there. Sorry, I'm just busy trying to sort everything out at the moment. Uh, what was the Lions versus EP score? It was 54-24, although if you had watched the game, it definitely that definitely did not reflect this, the game at all. It was a pretty ordinary game, to be honest. Um, I thought the Lions were really poor. Um, EP elephants don't look particularly fit. Probably a little bit of uh, cause for concern. Um, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. This is a phenomenal try by Grant Williams. I mean, he spots a bit of gap, takes attack quickly, and then puts on the afterburners, and he motors over. So, yeah, while we're while we getting settled in here, yeah, let's try and get some score predictions. So we've just seen Sharks take first blood. Uh, yeah, it should be fixed now. Sorry, as I said, it was a little bit of a rush trying to get everything up. And it's one of those things, as soon as you want to get something done quickly or when you're in a rush or anything like that, then YouTube decides to not cooperate. So um, we'd fixed it and saved it like three different times, but it just wasn't saving the title. So it should hopefully be sorted now. Um, so apologies for that. Um, right, let me just sort of try and settle in and take a breath here. Right, so we've got the, the cheaters on our end back on the Sharks' heart. That's a very nice run by Roscoe Speckman. Bit of a frantic start here. Um, so, yeah, let's get some score predictions. Uh, I think I said in the preview that I... I think I said Sharks by five? Um, I think that's what I said. I can't actually remember, to be honest. There's been a lot of stuff happening in the last few days. Um... That's a forward pass. Not? Okay, well, the cheaters are through here. That's a brilliant handoff by Nisi and Sile. Oh, almost an inset there by Grant Williams. Was that charge? Was that deliberate knockdown? No. Don't think so. 
I don't know what's happening here, to be honest. I haven't had much communication now. That's held up, apparently. Right, so the Cheetahs have now got the ball back on the 22. And there's a penalty. No, we want to just calm down. Let us all catch up and see what's happening here. Right, let me just make sure that that's, that match report and everything's up for the last one. And then we can really get stuck into this game. Um, yeah, I said um, Sharks by five. I think it's going to be quite a close game. And I think that people are writing off the Cheetahs. I don't know why. Um, oh, sorry, I mean, some people are writing off the Sharks, I suppose. Look, I mean, I think it's a decent Sharks side. I mean, I know it's the first first Cheetahs side, really, um, apart from a couple of players who have left. But you, there's still a lot of good players in the Sharks. I mean, you look at that loose tree of James Butle um James Fenter, Pepsi Butelezi, um, Timbalani Bully. That's a good loose trio. There's nothing wrong with those players. Um, Hiron Andrews, JJ Van der Mesh, it's a good lock combination. I don't know why there was so much worry about the about the, the shark side. It's a good side. All right, so we've got a line out here from the Cheetahs from a penalty. They've set them more, but they're not going anywhere. Um, and that's why I think I actually backed the, the Sharks. So I said that the pack is a very powerful pack. Um, and that can count for so much. You know, if you can dominate, that's another penalty. And they go quickly as Ruan Pino bringing the back line in. They're very well spread here. Oh, it's a very good inside step by Clayton Blomikies. This will be a try. Roscoe Speckman goes over. He replies. Five points to seven. The last thing we needed when we were trying to catch up was a, was a frantic start. But this is all down to Ruan Pino's experience. He's if that, the one that goes down with the try. A little bit of a birthday present there from Roscoe Speckman. Thirty-seven today, and yet, in my opinion, playing some of his best rugby he's ever played. Um, Ruan Pino, very, very impressed with the way he's he's just adapted himself. Really, you know. I mean, I mean, I think to be fair, we are moving towards a stage where age is becoming less and less relevant. You've got more and more players in different sports just proving that you know you don't reach thirty-two and expire, that you can play long into your career. Um, and I think Ruan Pino is another example. Good take there from the Cheetahs on the retake there. I think that was a pretty poor yesterday was actually the kick and regather, both in the Stormers Greekwas game as well as the Pumas um Bulls game. Um and and you know to be able to exit properly is 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 a very important part of the game because you know the the points you score are only as important as being able to follow that up with, with retaining the ball, exiting the play, and continue to put the pressure on the team. You don't take the kick off cleanly and you're putting biting pressure right back on you. It's a big kick from France Day and a very nice exit play from the Cheetahs. Da, 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 da. Right, and there's our clock up to date. Uh, yeah, slightly awkward. I know, we're pretty much there. Right, so who are we all supporting? Where are we all watching from? What's what's the chat? How's the week been? Wednesday rugby. A bit of a weird um, concept to have Wednesday rugby, but I suppose it's better than no rugby. Decent weather in around the uh, country, so maybe a couple of people got some bras going and a bit of evening rugby to keep you entertained. Uh, it's a poor okay, take by Yar and talks to one possession straight back from the lineup. They are almost up to 22. Good kick there from Grant Williams. So seven seven so far in the first twelve minutes. Sharks now on the front foot here. Oh, that's a nice ball in, inside. And another penalty for the Sharks. Nice hands there from um I think it was Quedzamona there. Nice little inside ball. Looks like some good continuity so far from the Sharks. 
and looks just in general. I mean, the match. If, if anybody watched the EP games, EP versus Lions game, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Just very little rhythm, very little structure. It was yeah, not a good advert for for South African rugby in the slightest. So let's hope that this is substantially better. We're off, already off to a much better start, to be honest. And um, the Sharks find touch on the 22 meters. So they will have a nice opportunity from the lineup here. Uh, Carl Beckner just being penalized there for not being on his feet. Uh, they've been playing for 13 minutes. And the clock on the screen is correct. So that's where we are, about 13 minutes. Well, by the time you hear it, it'll probably be a bit more, but yes. So the clock on the, the screen is correct in terms of where I am in the match. Hopefully a match that won't take longer than two hours. So the Sharks find themselves inside the 22, but struggling to really get past it. There's some decent defense here early on by the Cheetahs. Much better defense than when Grant Williams just ran the, pretty much half the length of the field. Without being touched for the first try. And another penalty for the Sharks. And Jordan Chait will just kick that into the corner and they'll have another go from the line out. Right, and I think to be honest, I think this is what this preparation series is about. Is is and and it's good that we're not seeing it. So we're not seeing anybody go for for polls. Um, you know, it's much more a case of of people trying to um trying to get as many try, trying to sort of win the get the tries, score tries from the set pieces, trying to sort their set pieces out as opposed to just taking the easy route out, which is what you which is the whole point. Um, because you know, there's no point. I mean, there's nothing to win. Um, and whilst winning is nice, at the end of the day, it, it's called a preparation series for a reason, especially the likes of the, the Rainbow Cup sides, your Shark Stormers, Lions, Bulls. What, what is the point in trying to take penalties and stuff like that? At the moment, you're just trying to put together, you know, the, the basics and try and get up to speed, try and see if players are good enough or get a hold in your squad, which you're not really going to see if you don't play. Right, so I think we haven't done it in the beginning, um, but let's just have a look at the teams for today. Um, yeah, we're so rushed, we didn't even have time to go through it. Um, where are we? Right, so the Chiefs have got a penalty here. France will stay and we'll kick them back up. Um, but yeah, there we go. So we've got Apple Fassi, Teka Abrahams, Jeremy Ward, captains of the side today. Um, Murray Costa at inside centre and Anthony Folmink there at number 11. A lot of pace there. A nice first half player. Jordan Chait there at 10 for the Sharks. Grant Williams is the scrum off. And the loose trio we said earlier, a very, very good loose trio. Probably the biggest sort of asset in the Sharks side today. Um, Pessy Butelezi, Dembelani Bortley, James Venter, Hiron Andrews, JJ van der Mesh, and uh, are the two locks. Then you've got John Hubert Mayer, Karen from Furens, decent line for the Sharks, and Quezza Mone are. Uh, the front row coming off the bench. Bezenbata, Intukum Chuno, Mike Kumbra, a nice young prop there. I think that the hooker battle is going to be quite interesting, trying to sort of decide who's going to be the number one hooker in the Sharks. Renio Hugo up against his former side. Um, Pilo Gamedi, Jaden Henderson, the scrum half, Monty Liebach, Werner Cox. So there's lots of depth in the, the back line there as well for the Sharks. And in terms of the Cheetahs, We'll have a look at them now. So we've got Clayton Blomikies. 
at full back. Obviously, a very exciting um, player. Loves to counter attack, loves to run, loves to get a bit of space. Nice, and he's actually on the ball now. Uh, Malcolm Yar and Roscoe Speckman are the two wings. Lots of pace there. Dries Rana, full partner, Fran Stone, who's been enormous um, for the Cheetahs in the last couple of months. Rana Fortain is at 10 for the Cheetahs. Ruan Pinar, captains aside, he is back on his 37th birthday. Aiden Davis, George Cornea, and Andisa Nsila. Andisa Nsila playing some very nice rugby at the moment. Um, Luis Trio, Renio Bernardo, and Carl Beckner are the two locks. Then Kuta Machuno, Vilma Arnoldi, Cameron Dawson are the front row. And then coming off the bench later for the Cheetahs, the likes of Minus van der Merwe, Conrad from Furen, Ronas Kutsia, Jean Droster, Opa Mohoje. It'd be really nice to get him back to the starting lineup. I've been playing some red rugby. He has so many injuries to Opa over the years. Um, and then uh, the Avena confirmation yet if it's Brandon Thompson or Duncan Sol, Theon Mayer, and then Chris Smith will round up the bench. Meanwhile, the Sharks have won a penalty here. Yeah, they've kicked to about the halfway line. I see now going up high. Decent chase, but it's a bit of a nothing kick. Lands kind of in the middle of the park. So now Roscoe Speckman's going to try and put on the afterburners. Yeah, he's dancing in and out. A little bit of good pass out there. Clayton Blomkies, he's got men out the outside. Out. You know, why be so complicated? You know, we have to go outside of the back of the hand. We couldn't possibly just pop the pop the ball to the person next to you who was in on the gap. Stop making things so complicated. Just keep it simple, really. That's a waste of opportunity. You know, two players outside you, and you have to try and go for the fancy pass. There's just no need for that. I mean, he's passed in the middle of two players. He, he finds that pass to either of those players there, and I reckon Cheetahs are probably going over. So that's a big waste by Ben um, Blomikis. So, Sharks trying to set more here from the line out. The call comes to use it once. Grant Williams in the back. He's already scored a try today. No Costa now takes the inside line. Doesn't make any progress, though. And another penalty. I think that's against Andisa and Sile. No, so it's for Tane. You didn't roll there. Prediction, 17-25. So I'm assuming we're going 17 cheaters, 25 off the Sharks. Not a bad shot, I don't think, actually. Um, yeah, for me, I think it's all about, you know, individual performances. A um, couple of players that I like to see playing nicely are, for the Sharks, I suppose, you know, in terms of the Rainbow Cup and trying to push for starting positions. I think James Fenter is someone who I've always um, enjoyed watching. Obviously, being a Lions fan, watched his progress through the years. Um, was very, quite upset when he left, actually. I mean, he was sort of set to potentially become a Lions captain. Um, so it was a big loss to the Union. Then was playing really well um, for the Sharks in the Super Rugby last year. And then sort of since kind of fallen to the wayside. So, look, it's a big opportunity for the for the players in the loose chair at the moment because there's a lot of depth um, across the flanks and eighth man at, um, in Durban at the moment. So, you know, it'll be for all of them. Pepsi Butelezi, Timelani Bolli, James Fenter, they need to try and prove that they deserve to be in around the mix. But when Dylan Richardson, Sikon Mozenoche, Sia Khaleesi, Henko Fenter all return, that they can still be part of it. That's a fantastic counter more by Cheetahs. They've driven the Sharks back up to the 22. As Mo Costa once again tries to come inside, makes more yardage this time. Ooh, John Herbert made a little bit isolated, and Decent Sealer's all over that. And he's won the penalty. It's very well played by Decent Sealer. Kevin Taylor saying, I think Cheetahs by 10. Ooh, Ron Pino's gone early. Uh, that is brilliant. That is Ruan Pino at its finest. Looked up, saw some space, went cross field. It's a huge kick. And he's found touch all the way inside the, the Sharks' half. All right, let's see what Javi Spree's got to say. Oh, that's a big hit by Franz Stein.
Ooh, that's a very good line by Roscoe Beckman. He's two. Very good continuity here by Cheetahs. Nice quick ball. Flag. That's going to be taking. That's cynical. We've got an advantage here. Taking out the scrum off. They've taken it. That's not 10 either. So that'll be another advantage. Cheetahs are literally two meters away. And there we go. Try time. The Cheetahs are over. That's very, very well played. Nice and quick continuity. And the Cheetahs are on the board once again. Puta Manchuno, the man who gets over. Very nicely worked by the Cheetahs there. Just rushed the Sharks. Um, and the Sharks couldn't get themselves organized enough. So, yeah, Clayton Romakees with the first um, tap and go. Kevin from Furen almost won that ball. And then literally through the middle, Puta Manchuno just as Kevin from Furen sort of getting himself out the way, picks it up and drives over. So it's good awareness by the Cheetahs prop, and they take the lead with the kick to come from France Dane. And he's saying Cheetahs by 10. So I think Cheetahs by 10 seems to be the theme. They are playing quite nicely at the moment. So in terms of Javier Farid, just had a chat with him now. I was saying that he would like to ex them to execute the, the game plan a bit better. Made reference to that Clayton Blomakey's pass, which is a little bit of a, yeah, a bit of a waste. Um, having such a good position and could have done so much with it. And then, yeah, it just didn't um, execute well. But, yeah, I, mean, I think it's a, it's a case of a, a cheetah side which have been playing together for a while um, will probably have the edge in terms of a shark side, which is a lot of chop and change. Um, not a lot of players have played a lot of rugby together. And despite maybe one-on-one, -on -one, to argue the merits of both sides, no way. And a good exit. Yeah, it's, I mean, look, having that front stain boot is immense, but it's fantastic exit play by the Cheetahs. Literally, take the kick off, one down, one phase, two phase, two France or stain. Please, can you put us into the, their half? Thank you very much. Especially when you've got the size of the boot of France stain. You can just make up so much ground. I really want to see France Day and lead the Cheetahs and go to one of the Rainbow Cup sides. Um, I don't know which side it should go to. Um, Stormers actually probably would be a decent fit in terms of trying to find an inside center. Um, but I just think it's going to be such a waste to see him playing. I don't know where the Cheetahs are playing and playing. If they go to the USA, talks about going to Russia. Um, it's a waste. And I mean, somebody that we want to be involved in the British and Irish Lions will probably be the utility back and we're the number 23 in the series he needs to be playing a, a good standard of rugby week in week out which i think he's going to struggle to do with the cheetahs but i suppose if you look at it it's i mean the british and Irish lines are what lie so yeah i miss a little bit of rugby but it's only a couple of months nice snap there bob uh no <laughs> Yeah, okay, so there's a penalty after the shot. It wasn't the best cross kick there. Cross Day must join the Stormers. Yeah, I think it's a good shot. Uh, I think if you look at, at teams which probably need an inside... Look, the Sharks could use an inside center, to be honest. Um, ooh, France Day and Lucanio Arm. Um, can you imagine that combination? of break and play while Puto and Chino get some treatment. Um, uh, so let me just sort this clock out because we are now a little bit ahead. Uh, we are 26 20 as Gordon Chait. Goes for the corner. It's a decent kick. Finds himself 
Plants touch inside the 22, so it's a nice opportunity here for the Sharks to hit back immediately. So they set the lineup. Get the ball more moving, but once again, it's very good defense by the cheaters. They're not budging. So they're gonna have there comes the call, use it once. And I think Kevin Fafir is gonna have to use Timbalani Bolly outside him. No, he goes himself. Shouldn't have, gets driven back. Ready for the mesh to ask to get them to Hit the Sharks on the front foot, and he loses possession, actually. That's poor from him. Now, here can the Cheetahs counter. It's good rush to face. Rocks his paper's got some space on the outside. He cuts inside. That's a very nice inside ball. He does not looking to kick at the moment, keeping the ball alive. This is actually a very nice play from them. And you will see a kick from here. Yep, Kate Glomicky has turned. He sees a little bit of space. Bounce with the ball. Had an advantage. They've got two whistles here, so I think we could be seeing a yellow card. Oh, we've got a we've got a yellow card. Grant Williams is off. Repeated infringement being offside. He goes into the bin. <sighs> It'd be quite nice to watch a game where we don't have a yellow card. To be perfectly honest. Um, Getting a little bit ridiculous. I mean, whether they're justified or not, it's just it's just not fun to see so many yellow cards. To be honest, that's that's just the main point, I suppose. Right, let me get that up on the scoreboard. That is a brilliant kick. I think it's France Stain has found touch literally on the five meter. So you know that is fantastic net result. Um, it is the away team. They've got a yellow card. Right, socks down to forty men. With a more to try and defend on the five meter line. The time is just over 28 minutes. Let's get that going. And that should be back. Cool. Well, please do smash a like on the video. Do subscribe if you are new. Um, we do match reviews, re reviews, previews, all the views. Um, Obviously, when we get to the Rainbow Cup, we'll try and step it up, do some more sort of team of the weeks and stuff like that. Ooh, we should have inside ball was on there. He just trying to wrap around for the line. I'm not going up for the mall. They almost got over, but and it's available for Ron Pinot. Ooh, that is a brilliant. I mean, <laughs> Ruan Pinot take a bow. That is a phenomenal pass. I mean, the the line by Dries Swanepoel was fantastic, but I mean, the, the cutout pass was superb. Age is but a number, ladies and gentlemen. Ruan Pinar is proving that in abundance tonight. What a performance so far from the scrum. On his birthday, I mean, a bullet pass. That must have traveled about 20 meters straight to Dries Swanepoel. He's around the player. He goes over easy as he likes. Doesn't even touch him. So you what, Fafta Clerk's injured. <laughs> you could see Ruan Pinot called up back to the box. And this is why I say, age is by a number. France Day is playing very good rugby. Ruan Pinot is playing very good rugby. You know, Willem Alba's coming for the Lions, playing some very good rugby. This whole sort of notion that once you get to 31, 32, that's your career done, is, is being rewritten. And so should it, you know. It's the, what's the point of being in the modern era? We've got better health, we've got better, you know, medicine, we've got better... Um, Science, sports scientists, you know, players are, are fitter, faster, and fit than ever. So, longevity of careers are definitely being extended. And Stain launches that into the stance, through the poles. He adds the two extras. And the Cheetahs are well in control. 21 points to 7 after 30 minutes. You're almost scoring a point a minute, which is a very nice... Uh, I think this, this pass is phenomenal. And that's a dream. Reese Ronapool just running in between the two defenders and just backing a scrum off to find him. And we won't be not obliged. I mean, you wouldn't think that he's been injured since, what, September, October? I mean, he was he got injured in one of the first games and then Super Rugby unlocked. And he hasn't played a game since. And, and this is what he's done in the opening period. 
You know what they say, a form is temporary, class is permanent, and it doesn't get much classier than Ruan Pinar. Good work there from the Sharks. They managed to win a scrum from the kickoff. Um, managed to create a mall, and the Timberline board has got his hands all over that. So it's a good result from them. But uh, yeah, down to 14 men for the next, what, six and a half minutes, call it? So a big stage of the game, I suppose, for the Sharks, because, you know, having fallen behind, quite a gap, big gap already developing between the two sides. Um, they'll need to try and, if, if nothing else, just keep the scoreline the same. But if they can try and score some points, um, keep themselves in the game. Because the Cheetah score again, suddenly it's a very, very long way back for the Sharks. Right, take care Abraham's in a scrum off as Grant Williams is down on the bench after being yellow carded for repeated infringements. Scrum's gone straight down. We're going to have another scrum to the Sharks, another reset. Something that SRA are trying to, um, yeah. And I think it's a good idea. You know, this whole, as soon as there's a reset, basically, and, and the ref wants to have a word, time off. Um, because we're, we're just not seeing enough rugby being played. You know, I think there's a whole stat that, you know, in an 80 minute game, South Africa, you know, some games are like less than 30 minutes, you know, not even like 35, 40 minutes, you know, and how can you be having, you know, 28 minutes of rugby actually being played across an 80 minute game, you know, it's just, it's non-starter. So that's why they've now said that the time has stopped between scrums. And then literally as they start binding again, then they put the timer back on. There is a short on penalty for the Sharks. That'll be, do them nicely, give them a bit of time. They're not in a hurry. They're going to set up nicely here. I think they're asking for a scrum. Yeah, Percy Woodley is getting quite vocal, telling Jamie Ward they want the scrum. Right, so the Sharks have called for the scrum. They're backing themselves, trying to win a, a, a long arm here. And nothing else. It just winds the clock a bit down, make sure they can get Grant Williams back on the field. So, uh, yeah, I can understand that, the reasoning there. Right. The referee just saying that that's pretty much it. No more warnings, any other infringements, and we're going to straight to a long arm penalty. Um, scrums are a big sort of point of, of, of discussion at the moment in SA rugby, talking about the fact that it's just, it's eating up too much of the time. There's too many resets, not enough rugby. And that's a long arm penalty to the cheaters though. So Sharks plan backfiring there. Not what they needed to hear at all. Against Crazy Mona, the Kuta and Chuna, I think it's going to be quite a nice little battle between him and, and um... but having said that, they have now not kicked it out. Abraham's done very well to keep that in. He goes inside. Not really fast. He goes to his left foot, trying to find touch. And that is a brilliant touch farm. That's bouncing just outside the line, rolling very favorably. Brilliant exit play from the young fullback. Good to see him back and playing rugby. And if he can get back to his best, he's another one who could be knocking for, for a buck call up. Was playing brilliantly last year in Super Rugby a lock before it was called off. Da, 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 da. Right, so she is now with the line out on the 10 meter line. So about, about the halfway line. Grants to stay, he puts his head up and he runs through between two, gets it up to the halfway line. Well, there's an overlap here. Lombakista Speckman, oh, there's the pace. He's going to, he put it. And back in, Ruan Pino. Oh, was that gone forward? No, it doesn't. Malcolm Yar is over for another try. Ruan Pinot is, has played a part in all three tries. He scored the first. Look, it was a gift from um, Roscoe Speckman. Then assist the second, assist the third. He is having an absolute blinder so far. And the Cheetahs move up to 26 points to seven. Sharks have no answer. And you can see the defensive setup here. Taka Abrahams gets drawn inside. You've got J.D. Funder Mesh on the outside. He's got no chance against Roscoe Speckman. He finds Ruan Pinot inside. No, he doesn't have the pace. Malcolm Yar's free on the inside of him, so he moves towards there. 
and easy as you like. Sharks just looking very, very shell shocked at the moment. No issues there from France. Staying 28 points to 7, and this could suddenly get very, very ugly for the Sharks. As Kevin Taylor says, easy as you like. And this is the cheetahs that we want to see. You know, it's 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 high intensity, it's you know, high tempo, it's it's running rugby, they're not looking to kick too much, they're trying to get their back line involved, they're trying to, you know, play nice and expansive rugby. It's exactly what you want to see from the from the side from Bloemfontein. I'll tell you what you don't want to see is James Fenter is walking off. That looks like a collarbone, he's got his arm wrapped up in his shirt. And that's yeah, you can see the disappointment on his face. An opportunity for him to try and stake a claim to be part of the final sort of shark squad and he is yeah he does not need this at all so he limps off which means we should see the introduction of um Salim Pilo Gomeri I'd imagine not a good take from the kickoff there from the Cheetahs but they have retained it eventually They've lost the tape to 22, so they can't kick it out. So the Sharks have sort of learned a little chip over the top from Ruan Pino. It's a good, oh, it's a favorable bounce. Lands in the hands of Jay from the mesh. It's a nice pass to the side. Now, up a little fast, he gets on his bike. He dances between two, three. He's still going. And the penalty, they go back from the penalty. Very, very well played there. I played fast. You beat at least about two or three defenders there. They've gone quickly. I have the Sharks. There it is. Gomedi's on. He takes the ball up there. Similani Bori now. They're making progress. It's good by the Sharks. Nice continuity. That's a very strong run there by Kwezi Mona. Oh, very nice hands. Very nice hands. Comes inside. Does Paul Mink. He's doing well to slow that down a little bit. The Sharks still have it. Kieran from Furin puts his head down. Much better from the Sharks. Going through the phases here. Running nice and hard. He's a little bit isolated. There's Jeremy Ward. Help comes eventually. Sharks are up to the 5 meter. Body now picks up and goes. He doesn't make any, any meters though. Jay Van der Mesh, that's power, that's pure oh, cheapest. That is just pure power from Jay Van der Mesh. He powers over. He had time. Hiram and Andrews behind him. It's a nice combination there, the two locks combining there. And the Sharks hit back 28 points to 12. Game on, really. 14 men, no problem. They're back. Jay Van der Mesh, I mean, wasn't running with momentum, just picked up and kind of just strolled over. And it just speaks to the size of the player. There's, there's, really, it was too easy. Had the help. Look, he had Quizamona and Harry and Andrews behind him, so that always helps. But yep, and there we go. Grant Williams is back on the field, so we can take away that yellow card. But a very nice leg drive there from JJ Van to get over. So with just with less than two minutes on the clock, we've got a forty oh off the upright. How do you miss that? That's right in front of you. Mate, throw away the kicking tee, hung up the boots. You cannot be missing that at this level. I mean, that is shocking. When I say he's right in front, I mean, at most, being very, very generous, two meters to the left, and he's missed it. I mean, come now. You cannot miss something like that at this level. Yep, Jordan Child will not want to watch that replay again. That's important two points, to be honest. Right, so Grant Williams back on the field for the last, what, two minutes? 20 points, 21 Sharks live betting. I tell you, if I had any money, I'd go put it on there. Although I think the Cheetahs are looking very good, but hey. Oh, that's a huge hit. That's Jeremy Ward for you. That is immense. On his opposite number, Drew Swanepoel, they win the penalty as well. Sharks captain has absolutely minced him. And he's gone quickly here. Pepsi Butelezi. 
he gets some meters as well. I really like Uchi, um, Pepsi Butelezi. I think he's a very nice player. Uh, trying to go. That is... <laughs> well, watch my... That's fantastic result by the, the Sharks. A kick in behind. France State is trying to guide it, hoping it's going to go too far. It sits up right on the corner by the try line. And he picks up and gets over. Picks up and walks over the try line there. Just waiting for it to try to go back. You can see the calmness of him. Doesn't quite, so he picks it up. And now he's going to be pushed into touch. But it was a huge hit by Jamie Ward earlier. Very physical player. His defense, as, his defense is his best part of his game. And that was a massive hit, which has started this whole situation. So, with 30 seconds to go, if the Sharks can score a try here, and look, I wouldn't back Jordan Chad with the kick after that hint we just saw now. But... Um, you know, 17-28 is a, is a whole different scoreline to 28-7. We've got an advantage for in the side, on the, coming in the side there from the Cheetahs. Sharks do still have a little bit of momentum. Tembalani Bully spins out, and he's completely isolated. They'll go for another penalty here. Grant Williams wants to take it quickly. Snap Sharks choosing to just try and slow it down a little bit. Also, they're going to go for the quick tap here. We've got Butelezi standing over here. He's got um, Kieran from Fuhrer on his side here. They go to Grant Williams. JJ van der Mesh is asked to carry it up. A bit lateral. Well, it gets driven laterally. Another advantage here for the Sharks. They could score here, then they're right back in things in the half, in the half time. Right, penalty here. A double whistle there from the referee, and I think um, Marius might be going to a card here. If nothing, a, ca a chat to Ron Pino about the um, repeated infringements. Yep, there we go, saying the next one's in the bin. Too many infringements there. All right, so what we've seen so far is a Ruan Pino masterclass and then some, some a gutsy fight back by the Sharks. So a very nice game, very nicely poised at the moment. Um, Sharks once again going with the quick tap. Butelezi, straight back to Grant Williams, and it's once again, it's JJ van der Mesh. So do you think this is all very um, training ground moved? Now we're going to look like we're going to get the back line involved. Nope. He'll carry it up. Nice hit there by Kutum Chuno. Does make some ground eventually. Talks a little bit out of ideas at the moment. Ben from Furin now. He goes up. A very, very nice tackle. Oh, France Stain has ripped it in the tackle as well. They've kicked it on. Now the chase is on. We've got four Sharks players tracking back. They've been hacked up field. Apelio Fassi picks it up first. He gets there, but it's been brought down. Malcolm Yo eventually brings him down as well. Now, what will the Sharks do? I think they're going to go into touch. Yep, they've taken that. They butchered that really. Fantastic play by France Stain. But that is it. That is half time. The score is 28 12 to the Cheetahs. A very, very good display so far from um, Hubby Fury's men. And uh, yeah, masterclass from Ruan Pinot. He just, <laughs> on his birthday, is playing an absolute blinder. Right, so let's get the half time up there. No, it's half time, not full time. Let's go relax. And after the flurry of last game and this and that, I'm actually going to get myself something to drink. So I shall be back. This is actually being televised anywhere. It's been televised on Super Sport, on Super Sport Rugby. Um, I don't think that I don't think there's any international to um, be anywhere, anything like that. Um, so I can't help you there. But I just know it's on Super Sport. That's what I'm watching on, and as far as I can know, that's the the only place. But yeah, I shall return momentarily. I'm just going to grab something to drink, and then we can go and dissect that half. Without the use of stats, though, because there's also no stats. Um, very frustrating, to be honest. Can't really follow the game live. There's no stats available. It's very limited. The board, they're trying to sort of 
know, rejuvenate broadcasting by having, you know, pitch interviews with this bench and interviews with the coaches and stuff like that. All we would like to see is a bit of stats and be able to look at who's making tackles and stuff like that. Don't go away. I shall return in a few minutes and then we'll look back at the game and get ready for what should be quite an exciting second half. Um, but yeah, I shall be back. Right, sorted. I wish that was a beer, but um, it is a Wednesday. There's work to be done. Uh, can't afford to have too many castles over here, but uh, definitely have some over the weekend. In terms of the weekend schedule, for those who are new, first of all, please do smash like on the video. We're on nine likes, so surely somebody out there can give us our tenth like. Uh, do also subscribe if you are new. We hit a thousand subscribers two weeks ago, which is really cool because we've only been going for about since about September, really. So I'm very happy with all the all the, the, the growth we've had and, and having a lot of fun with the channel and stuff like that. So please do smash a like on the video and do subscribe. If you are new, in terms of the weekend schedule, we'll be live on Sunday for Six Nations. Um, it is, I think, the Ireland game, Ireland Scotland on Sunday. Um, so we'll be doing that game as well. Unfortunately, we'll not be live on Saturday, though, for that Six Nations, but we will have a review up on Sunday and everything like that. So... Plenty of content still coming. We'll do some reviews of this preparation series as well as a couple of previews and stuff on the Six Nations, which will be out in the next day or two. Right, so let's try and get some final score predictions down in the comment section. I think we had someone who was saying, yeah, I think 1725, the VSL. Um, I think it could be quite close, to be honest. It was, I mean, it, it was literally minute, moments away if the Sharks scored. Um, in the corner there when they were very close. I probably would have been about 28-17 going into half time. So I don't think that's a bad shot. Um, except I do think that there are tries left in this game. Da, 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 da. Now, even Nas Boerta saying all he wants from this game is a better game than the one before. I mean, I can't... Yeah. The EP Elephants-Lions game really was not a, a fun watch at all. Um, but hey, what can you do, hey? What can you do? Right, so Huntley's saying cheaters by 10. Sticking with... I think you said... Yeah, I'm sticking with by 10. I don't think it's a bad shot. I think the Sharks, especially going back to 15 men, will, will push the cheaters a bit. And some very good players coming off the bench for the Sharks, particularly in the back line. And you've got, I mean, you can bring on Jaden Hendricks, uh, Bernard Cock, and Monty Libok. You could do a lot worse. Da, 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 da. Also going to be tucking a link into the description for our Discord server that we have just started, trying to get that going, trying to sort of facilitate a bit more conversation between fans. Um... Yeah, I mean, we're trying to find a, a, a way to really be able to chat with fans all the time. We want to try and get people on the show here so we can get some live call-ins and stuff like that. So the idea is to use our Discord for that. So if you're on Discord, please do come and join and hang out. Looking at the trials here, I mean, this, this, this pass by Ruan Pinar is absolutely sublime. I mean, it's it's skipped about five, six, seven players. Reece Swanepoel was running, running a dream line, and he goes over very easily. I mean, Anthony Folman can complain, but that's the man you're supposed to be picking up.
Yeah, so it's all one way traffic at the, at the stage. I mean, the Cheetahs really did. And after the, the brilliant start by Grant Williams, I mean, some individual brilliance there for that first try. Um, it was one way traffic at the Cheetahs, and they, they just really punished the Sharks, especially when they went down to 14 men. But since then, the Sharks just saw, showed a, a lot of um, a lot of fight, to be fair. Should have probably had a, a try in, in, towards the end of the half there, which would have made a big difference. I think if they had scored just for half time, that would have helped helped a lot. Right, so just a couple more minutes and we'll have the second half. The score is currently 28-12. Um, I don't think that's going to be the final score. I think we've got lots of points still left in this game. So very excited to see what happens there. Um, so far, Huntley you says cheers by 10. I'm, you are, I mean, I said Sharks by 5, which probably might not be the best. Might not turn out to be the best prediction. But hey, who would have thought that France, I mean, Ruan Pino would have done at this sort of half. France Stein also looking very good. So the vets, the veterans coming through at the moment. Da, 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 da. Very interesting to see where the cheaters go and what they do. And I think it's, it's very important for SA Rugby that, regardless of that's the cheaters, that we need to get our local leagues be better and to a higher standard. I mean, you watch the curry, I mean, the Varsity Cup, which has been um, announced that will be taking place in April, May, in a bio bubble along with the Varsity Shield, which would be quite cool. Um, and it's a decent standard of rugby. And what we need to try and do is figure out how can we translate that into Curry Cup First Division, Curry Cup Second Division. How can we try and get ourselves towards a you know, six or eight team Curry Cup, which is really competitive, not just a case of four really good sides, cheetahs always there and they're about, and then Greek was Pumas, EP Elephants, who can't compete. And I think the biggest thing is we need a, a better system of sharing players and to ha and to try and distribute talent a bit better. I mean, when, you, when you're seeing how the Sharks, I mean, not the Sharks, the Bulls, just absolutely decimated the EP Elephants last weekend and how that's a, a second string side, that needs to change. You know, you can't be having a second or third team, you know, demolishing a first team of what should supposed to be one of the top 10 sides in the country. Um, you know, you look at the EP Elephant side and you think that your Marty's Tucks, you know, they could probably beat them. It's a bit of a problem. So I think that's probably one of the biggest things that SA Rugby needs to try and solve in the coming years is just figuring out how they can make competitions more competitive. And the first thing I think we need to do is move away from provincial setup. Um, I know it's got a lot of history and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, um, uh, if 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 having another team in Cape Town or another team in Durban or even another team in ja in Kauteng, um means that they can attract better players and put them together better rugby than the likes of a, of, a, of the Greekers and Kimberley, then why not? You know? um, we've had that sort of system everywhere else in the world. Look at football. I think that's probably the future. But uh, yeah, so a couple minutes away for the second half, yeah? It's very limiting not being able to do anything at half time because of the lack there of stats. I mean, I think that. Yeah, we need SA Rugby and Super Sport to try and fix that, really, because it's, it's just become very difficult trying to get excited about a competition, excited about this, and to try and really build momentum when you can't go and. You can't even follow the score live on, on Super Sport or anything. You go to the Super Sport website and it only shows the full time scores, like hour or two after the game's finished. So that's not really good enough, to be honest. That needs to change. But yeah, so making things a little bit difficult for half time because you can't look at too much of that. Um, but we are back at Rupertain Stadium. And hopefully kickoff will be in the next couple of minutes. Open Mahodja coming out there. Hopefully we'll see a decent round for him. That right knee strapped up. So many injuries, but such a good player when he's playing good rugby. So he needs to, eat. I mean, he's someone that needs to get back to his rest.
Right, here come the Sharks. Bit of work to do if they were to try and turn this the scoreline around. 16 points is the difference. Could have been 14 points, but it was a terrible kick by Jordan Chad. And I think, you know, really, at this level, to be missing kicks like that is, is, is inexcusable, really. And Werner Cock is on the field. Who has he replaced? That is the question. Big smile on his face. He loves his rugby. Um, no, I'm not convinced about him as a as a as a 15s player, but look, their own. Um, I think we're hearing that he's coming into, at inside centre, which would be in place of Murray Costa, and I think that's probably a better idea for the Sharks when it comes to to Werner Cock. I don't really back him at wing. I don't think he's got the pace. Um, got got a skill set, nice and physical, very good tackler. So I'd like to see him get more opportunities at at centre. Roscoe Speckman is another one. I don't think he'll ever play um, Springboks, but very, very exciting in the 15th game in terms of counter-attacking and, and, and lethal, lethal finisher. So we'll wait for confirmation for exactly who Werner Cox is on, but let's just make sure we get our timer right. Right, and time is gone. The Sharks playing right to left, cheetahs left to right. And Jordan Chat goes into the 22. It's a good take there. And Aiden Davis takes it in. Francois Stain. Standard procedure. He finds touch. Sharks do take it quickly, though. He find, I mean, that's an immense kick. He's found touch beyond the 22. Sharks take it quickly, though. I played it fast. He's now picked it up and chased himself. What a great face. And Clayton Romicky spotted some space out wide. Malcolm Yar runs into Anthony Folmick. So yeah, it is Mario Costa who's off, by the way. So Werner Cock will have 40 minutes at inside center. Interesting to see how that goes. I think it's a much better idea. I think he's much suited to much more suited to being a center than he is to a wing. Ron Pino is so good in the first half. Will he be able to manage a full 80 is the question. Coming back from a long-term injury, so one wouldn't think so. But uh, hopefully the damn... Oh, that's a very good cross kick. Roscoe Speckman. Oh, it's just too high. It's just too high. If he had caught that, he was away. Carl Stain had hands on, he on his head. He knew that that went to pad and that he was away there. Just slightly too high. Quite a decent um, effort there by Roscoe Speckman. But Cheetahs really are looking like the Cheetahs of old. Playing some very exciting rugby. Very nice players in the shoes off. But France Stein playing some of the best rugby I've ever seen him play. Um, it's, a, it's amazing how he has transformed himself. You know, when you think of when he arrived all those years ago. And look, he was still big. But so quick off the mark. Uh, had a really lethal step. And, and how good he was in the 2007 World Cup. That's a great run around. Ben Romicky's now ooh, inside from Malcolm Yar. He is up to the 10 meter. And yeah, and then now, as he's gotten older... Got a little bit bigger, lost a little bit of pace. Not quite as quick, um, as, as quick as he used to be, but he's just become such a tactical master, really. Um, the boot has been immense for years, so that continues to be an important part of his game. But his leadership now and the way he sort of marshals that back line is, isn't massive. Sharks not going up. It's a decent, uh, it's a bit of a, oh, that's terrible. Oh, Roscoe Speckman, you cannot be doing that. Somebody of your quality. And now the Sharks are going to counter. JJ Fundamesh is out, no, outside. The big hit there by France Stain. Okay, Abraham's those has got it. Sharks now inside the 22. A good read there. Now Carl Vechner. Now Carl Vechner. Carl Ace. Now see now out on, on two. Jeremy Ward out on the side. He managed to cut inside. Sharks going from the side. But they haven't made too much progress in terms of territory. Don't even may. It kind of slows things down a little bit. Him and Body, he gets over the advantage line. That's a bit better. Jordan Chad goes himself. Shrugs off one. Don't even may. Picks up and goes. That's probably the wrong option. She just got hands all over that ball. I'm not sure if it's available. Comes eventually for Grant Williams. Karen from Furin now carries it up. It's a good cat tackle there by Carl Beckner. 
That's good. Good carry there by Crazy Mono. Making yards almost up to the five meter. There's an advantage now. So license to do whatever they want. Grant Williams goes himself. Pops up. Timelani Bully goes over. That's a brilliant try. Grant Williams, I tell you, he's trying to match Ruan Pina best he can. That's not a bad way to start. Timelani Bully, the try scorer, but that's all about Grant Williams. A nice little snipe in between two players. Manages to free the hands, get the ball up. And Timelani Bolli crashes over. And that is something that the modern game is becoming so good. The player's ability to be able to get in between two players. I mean, on the floor, they're being able to, and then being able to get the pop up, you know, it becomes so difficult to defend. Um, and yeah, Timelani Bolli sporting a little cut on his eye from his efforts, but he won't mind. And now Jordan Champ with a with a chance to to redeem himself after that awful, no other way of saying it, the awful conversion attempt in the first half. But the perfect start for the Sharks. This is exactly what they needed to do. If they're going to try and fight back into this game. They need to score first, and they've done exactly that. That's a much better strike, but it drifts off to the left. So the score will remain 28-17. Could have been 28-21 had he got those two kicks. So, But that was a tough one. We'll, we'll let them slide there. But very good from the Sharks here. The brilliant pop pass. Out the back of his hand, on the floor. Grant, oh, no, that's terrible. And this is what I keep talking about. When I keep saying, now suddenly the cheaters are on... Uh, and that's not the best pass by Ruan Pina. So, and that's what I keep saying. A terrible, terrible um, take from, well, a non-take from Harry Andrews. He spills it forward. And suddenly the cheese on the attack. And then Ruan Pina trying to find the, the man on the outside. Gets intercepted. And we go back for the knock-on. And the Sharks, after, you know, inflicting damage, getting on the front foot. The Perth West start the half. You then miss the, 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 the kick re receive. And all of a sudden, you're pre under pressure. And if the cheetah score here, it just nullifies what you've just done. And this is why I say, you know, being able to retake the kickoff and being able to have a decent exit strategy that the cheetahs have done quite well. It is such an underrated part of the game. Right, James Fenter there on the mic there, so he reckons there's a peck injury. Got his arm caught behind a bit of a tackle, so he says hopefully a few weeks. Good to hear he's got his collarbone, that the way he was walking off, we worried that that could have been the case. Oh, that's very good running here. Clayton Blomkey's on the outside. Roscoe Speckman, so much pace. He gets on the inside. Clayton Blomkey's once again. Bruce Swanepoel carries it up. The cheat is all the way up on the five meter now. Game Norman Keys fills in that scrum half. Carl Beckner puts his head down. Grant Stay, it's a very nice tackle there by Jamie Ward. Who knew they were the British? Dummy almost. Good defense now by the Sharks. They managed to rally a little bit. And the cheetahs on any out. France Stan goes down. He puts his head down. And that goes over. The Sharks absolutely nowhere. And the cheetahs are back on the scoreboard. Brilliant work there by the cheetahs. And the Sharks just couldn't just couldn't really rally eventually. <laughs> Fantastic break by Clayton Blomkies and Roscoe Speckman. They've been fantastic. They're a fantastic combo. Uh, Reyna Bernardo is the man who gets onto the scoreboard. Africa can't say and just join. The scoreline is insane. I would have thought the Sharks would be, be way ahead. Um, I don't really think so. Um, I wouldn't say definitely not way ahead. I think quality, man on man. The Cheetahs have got a very good side on today. And you've got to look at how many much the Sharks are rotating. You know, definitely a second string side. Not a side has played a lot of rugby together. And that makes a big difference. So... I still predicted the Sharks to win because I thought the pack would, would, would play a bigger role. But so far, we've seen a really, really good performance by the Cheetahs. And look, Ruan Pino is playing a lot of confidence and has decided that he'll take the conversion. 
But France staying, electing not to take this one. The way Ruan Pino is playing at the moment, he'll probably slot this down the middle, no problem, to be honest. Uh, hooked it to win the slide. Almost came back to the right, but he misses out. So the score will remain at 33-17. And this goes back to what I was saying. If the Sharks had just managed to catch the ball properly, had a decent X play, get it to the halfway line, you know, look, not to say that the Cheetahs wouldn't have scored, but you've got to be able to relieve that pressure. And all they did was invite pressure all the way back on them, and the Cheetahs took advantage, and suddenly the Cheetahs are back in front by quite a substantial margin. And all the good work the Sharks did has been sort of reset, really. Um, in comparison, Rene Bernardo has just scored the try, has gone up and taken that up, taken the kickoff beautifully. Ron Pinot will look for another phase here, as has been the case. And they don't have the safety 22, but often, yeah, we look to Ron Pino, I mean, France Dane, who puts it very, very high. That's a very good kick to chase. It's a very nice um, catch there by Jordan Chait. Is Duncan Sol on the pitch there, so that answers the question on who's on who was um who got the nod in the end. Right, sharks now going up. They've got Tucker Abrams chasing. It's a very very good take there by Ross Speckman, and he gets the offload by France Stone, who turns and kicks. Ball stays inside though. An unfavorable bounce for the cheaters. Jordan Chait now, he goes up, chasing his own kick on France Stain, who brushes him off. And uh, he's lost the ball in the contact. Very good tackle there by Werner um, Cock. Good tackle there by Werner Cock, who, I mean, France Stain, nice take, brushes off Jordan Chait, puts his head down. Werner Koch gets nice and low and forces the turnover. I really like Werner Koch. He's a very exciting player to watch. Um, I don't think he'll ever really make it in the 15th game. Um, but such an animated player when he plays. Really to the physical part. Very skillful. And it's always nice to have, have those sevens players involved um, in the 15th game. Just bring a whole different dimension to the, to the game. You know, the skill set you see, the breakdown work. I mean, we saw we were Null yesterday. Um, winning a couple of turnovers, and that the, the that whole sevens experience definitely adds to the fifteens game. That's a time off here. Well, a couple of players received treatment. I think we're about ready to start again. We saw the match earlier take longer than two hours to actually uh, finish, so hopefully we won't be seeing the same thing here. But we've got time back on. We'll restart with a scrum for the Sharks after the knock-on from France Dane. Start with scrum. Go for a ball here for the Sharks. You go out to Apple Fassi, he kicks ahead, he sees a bit of space. That's a lot of pace coming through from Anthony Falmink. Ooh, Ron Pino's missed that. They've kicked it inside. Werner Koch has it. He goes over. Sharks hit back. That is the perfect way to get back into the game. This game is ebbing and flowing, and who knows what's going to happen. A rare mistake there from Ron Pino, who didn't quite um, read the kick um, as much as well as he would have liked. Um, and they are. Bit of a kick inside, and there were four or five Sharks players all following up. So a very, very good chase there by the Sharks. Werner Koch is the man where the ball popped in front. He grabbed that. He went over. Surely, surely, Jordan Chait won't miss this one. And this should be the Sharks back within striking distance. A fantastic game. This is what we want to see. You know, both teams running with the ball, trying to keep it nice and open, trying to be enterprising, not taking the easy options. Very, very good display of rugby. This is more what we want to see from... The preparation series you know not not the not what we saw in the early game today but just some nice running rugby 
Apple Recon says, how can the Sharks afford to pay for their quality in their squad? Um, a corporation called MVM Holdings has just acquired them and they've got a super load of money in terms of physical money and in terms of being for them, in terms of how they can actually deal with having that much quality and how they're all going to get to play, I don't know. To be honest, I, I do not know. We were having this conversation earlier about the loose forwards and the fact that you've got Henko Fenter, Sika Mozinoche, Sia Khaleesi, Dylan Richardson. Four players not even involved today. And yet your loose trio is still James Fenter, Tim Milani Boli, Pepsi Butelezi. Now those three players would all push for at least the bench spot in most unions, to be honest. And they might not even be making the squads for the Rainbow Cup. The, the amount of quality in the, in the Sharks setup is just unbelievable. And they're only going to look to add more. You know, Rennie or Hugo, LaRue Roots now, two locks that they've signed. Well, LaRue Roots was, out, was there on loan. They've recalled him. A lot of depth at lock as well. Ebok is on. There we go. You asked for it and he's there. That's a rare mistake by the fast. He knocks it backwards or forwards. Yeah, they have. They're not done the signings. I think they they've been quite open about the fact that they that they want to bring in some players and bring in some of the best players in the world. Um, I think that I saw a report today now about um, Bongi Monambi potentially not signing a new contract for Stormers and whether he could be a um, possible <coughs> player on. Oh, I've got time off yet on the Sharks' radar. Um, to be honest, I think if the Sharks were to add in positions, I think inside center and hooker are probably the two that I would look at strengthening for them. Um, I think, you know, if you look at hooker, you've got Fez and Barty, you've got Kerry Fafira, and you've got Dan Eusta all sort of battling out for that position. Um, and the fact that they haven't managed to settle for one sort of shows that it's three players where they're not bad players and quite quite a lot of young um, youth there, but just not quite, you know, it's not quite Aka Panamurva. You know, they haven't really replaced him yet. Um, same as inside center, you know, they haven't really replaced um, Andre Esterhazen just yet. Um, you know, Marius Lowe is not a bad player, but but he's not even. I mean, he's not um, Esterhazen. He's not Damien Delindy. He's not. You know the quality that they use. I mean, you think of their backline. You got Lukanya Am, Spurin Corsi, um, Makazuma Pimpi, Apolele Fassi, Mani Libok. Perrin Bosch, Senele Nahamba, Jordan Hendrickson. There's so much star quality. I would say inside center is the one position in their back line, the Sharks' back line, which I don't think they, well, could improve. But that's just getting very greedy, to be honest. If you had to add France Dane in there, then cheapers. Right, penalty there for the cheaters from the scrum. So a nice opportunity for them to hit back. And this is, once again, we talk about the Sharks not being able to get out of the half once they score points. And that's the problem. You know, you, you score the points um, and then you don't exit properly. And now the cheaters are going to go to the line and try and go over. Um, we can stream the match. Um, I'm watching DSTV now. That's the only place as far as I know that it is showing it. I don't know about overseas, but in South Africa, you can only watch it on DSTV. It's on the rugby channel, which is, I think, like 2.11 or something. Or 2.10, I think it's 2.11. Um... I don't think there's anywhere apart from DSTV that you can watch it. So the Cheetahs now line up. We've got, what, 26 minutes left to play. Game very much in the balance, but if the Cheetahs can score here, then once again, it becomes a big task for the Sharks. That's a very big carry there. Uh, Guido's saying 6 Khaleesi, 7 Fenta, 8 Notche, and Bolly must come off the bench because he can cover 6, 7, and 8. You know, you know, the problem with that is, is that I think um, Dylan Richardson is going to push for a start quite soon. He was brilliant in the, in the Curry Cup. Um, I know he's young. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and you've got Henko Fenta as well. Look, I don't think Henko Fenta, I, I think he's a good player. I don't think he quite gets into the top three. Um, yeah, so that number seven spot's going to probably be the big one that's up for grabs, really. You're not going to drop Notch here. As soon as Khaleesi's fit, he's going to come straight in. Um, so it's whether you can move to um, Khaleesi to seven and have Richardson at six. Or, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, to be honest. I'm very interested to see how they, they negotiate that. It's a nice problem to have, to be honest. Right, speaking of hookers, Fez and Barthes on... We've got a whole new front row here for the Sharks. 
Primbrai is on. Shun is on and Fez and Bate. Could Richardson and Fenter start together? In theory, yes, but then you're not playing, you know, Khaleesi or um or Hengo Fenter or but in theory you could have Richardson at six, Fenter at seven, and Tikabozi Notch at eight. Which is also a very good loose trio. I think it's just it's a it's ridiculous. Um I mean, as, as I said, it's a combination that would work nicely. You've got the, the tackling and the hard work of um, Fenty. You've got the, the the pace and the the ball on, on, on the sort of the breakdown work of Richardson and then Chicken was a Noche. But those aren't your best three playing. I mean, that's not the best three in your loose trio Arsenal for, for, for Sharks. Also, you should see what they do with the prop situation. You've got Tom Mastori, he's, he's injured quite a lot. Obviously, you've got Oxen Chair at um, Lucid, and that's just... Uh, and then that, another, another penalty, scrum penalty for the Cheetahs. So, a new front row for the Sharks, but under pressure there. I think it's Michael Kumbra, who's, And this is the problem. I really like Kumbra in the open. I think he's a very nice young player, but he really does struggle when it comes to scrum time. And we saw him been taken apart a few times when he's been given a couple of starts. And I think that unless he sorts that whole scrum issue out... He's going to really struggle to, to take the step up in his career. And yeah, Cheetah's going for another scrum. They want somebody sent off here. So Cameron Dawson, Mark Kumbri, round two. Here we go. It's gone down again. We're going to reset each other. So you can see all the pressure on Michael Kumbra here. You're not going to make it as a prop if you can't scrum, chap. So this is going to be a big area he's going to have to work on. Afro saying, yeah, as a storm sport, I'm really jealous of the Sharks. Actually, I used to be a Sharks fan at 07 until the lapse of concentration defense. The Super League <laughs> final. You can't just leave the team once they lose a final. That was the case. I think I would have stopped being a line supporter when I was about six. All right, another scrum here. And a penalty to the Sharks this time. So that's a very interesting result. After... A lot of pressure, and the, the cheaters continue to go after them. They they lapped up the pressure, and they won a penalty themselves. So, should the cheaters have gone for the line there? Maybe that's a little bit different. Probably, I think. But, hey, you reap what you sow, and there's a very, very good response there from the Sharks. So, that's a big confidence boost for the new front row, which has just come on. Now, Molly Leibach will try and get them as far upfield as he can, and he finds touch just after the halfway line. So with just over 23 minutes to go, Sharks are still definitely in this match. Um, they need to score the next third. If they can score in the next sort of 10 minutes, game on, really. If the Cheetahs score next, I think it becomes a very big mountain to climb. Right, so Cameron Dawson is off. That penalty is the last contribution he had. Ooh, and the Sharks... Have lost the line out. Oh, but now hang on. Debock has intercepted it, but they're going back. I think it was a knock on there. Yeah, knock on by the Sharks there. So the Chiefs almost won that line out, and then Debock almost intercepted him, but they'll go back for the knock on. So, yeah, it just hasn't quite happened. The Pheasant Bart is first. I think it's his first throw, actually. Straight through the uh, hands of Gamedi. He won't want to watch that again. Nothing wrong with the throw. Came on for James Fenter in the first half. So he's had time to, to get catch up to the speed of the game. There can be no excuses about that. Carl Vector's on. Droste replaces him. Number 19. Another industrious performance by the man who captained the side in Juan Pino's absent. Can you say, yep, you support a team. That's your team. These fair weather supporters make me laugh. Y'all, listen... Supporting the Lions has been a long and tough journey, so at times I can definitely understand it, but I just think that it's just so much rewarding when you go through really bad times. I mean, being a Lions supporter the last three years has been an absolute dream after the last sort of 10 years of nightmares, but 
And look, each to their own. Each to their own. That's another massive scrum by the Sharks. They won a penalty, in fact, and that looked like it was on my Kumara side as well. So you can see how much it means to them. Tukum Kuno, he's buzzing. He's buzzing after that. Brilliant effort there by the Sharks. Money Leibach will now kick this closer towards the try line. And suddenly the Sharks' momentum moving towards Durban's side. I think they're back in this game. Did he kick that too far? No, that's a brilliant kick. So they'll have a line out on the five meter line and could tend to try and maul this over. The perfect opportunity for the Sharks to hit you. That really should be supporting board and everything else is just, yeah, look. It's always difficult with those sort of sides. But I, and that's why I keep saying that we know we need to have our teams like your borders, like Bullens, like your, you know, even the tall inland. We try and get more teams playing regular rugby. Oh, that's gone over the top, but it's been picked up by Michael Kumbarai, but it's not straight. Is the call. Clinical. That's the problem. Just not clinical there from the Sharks. It's a skew throw from Fez and Bata, and that's a big part of being a hooker. And that's why they really try to push D Dylan Richardson at um, playing. Because his throwing isn't quite good enough. So if your, your basics of hooking aren't quite good enough, you're always going to struggle to make it as a hooker. And Fez and Bata, that's a big let off there from, for the Cheaters. To be fair, they've still got a defensive line-up. They go to the back. Aiden Davis has picked it up nicely. And then they'll ask Brown State to clear. He finds touch right by the halfway line. And that, I mean, this exit play is so easy when you've got something like France. So it's got a bit of cramp, I think. Went down straight after that kick, so I think he'll probably need a substitution. Yeah, Sharks in your conference. We're we not happy about that. Good to see, because I think it just slows the game down. Right, so now Fez and Barty, he, he get, he's the reason we're in this situation is because he didn't find his jump in, so can he find it now? He really stop putting, putting the clock on and off here. My life. Nightmare. He does find his man. I appreciate the channel. I'll keep commenting right now. I've got load shedding. Yeah, oh, no, it's a struggle. I'm starting. I'm due at 10. So thankfully we can get this game in, but it really is a struggle in South Africa. Kumbura carries that up. Oh, that's a very good line bar. With Pesci Butelete is there. He's going to go all the way. He does. The Sharks hit back. Game on. Game on. Brilliant line there by Moni Liebach. A nice pass at the top there. Pepsi Butelete is the man that goes over. He's been very good all night. And suddenly, what was looking like a game where the Chiefs were running away with it, Sharks are making a big game of this. They are back within four with the conversion to come. Hey, maybe my Sharks by five could have been a decent call. Very nice pop pass there by Williams as well. He's been actually very good. I think the two scrum halves can be very tough with what they've done today. Ruan Pino has been very good. Goat Williams has been good. And Ronnie Liebach will now have a difficult kick. Not the easiest one. You go back to those four points that Jordan Chep missed. Could have leveled the scores. But now, can Money Leibach make it a two-point game? The question answer is... Yeah, did it sneak in? It does sneak in. Sharks move to within two. Game on. 18 minutes to go. It can go either way. What are you thinking? What is the final call predictions? Who are you backing to come on top? It's a fantastic encounter in Free State. This is what we need to see more of. Right, so we've got two subs over here. We've got Nsila is off and Open Mahoja is on. And I think Jaden Hendricks is also on ahead of Grant Williams, who I thought was very good. Yeah, there is Jaden Hendricks up. 
Uh, the time on the clock is 63 minutes here, and we've just got a penalty from the Cheetahs. What I keep saying, the Sharks' exit play is what is going to kill them this game. Michael Kumbura, the man who's been penalized for obstruction, apparently changed lanes, and all of a sudden just allowed the Cheetahs right back into the game. They can go kick to the corner, and if they hit this, and if they score now, then once again the Sharks have to go back and score more than a try. So the restarts from the, the Cheetahs have been, I mean, from the Sharks, been really, really poor. And that's what's allowing the Cheetahs to just get back into this game time after time after time after time. Right, so can the Cheetahs score next? They go up and they find Bernard. They wrap around the benches. Aiden Davis takes the ball into cap into contact. Open Mohoje, it's a nice strong carry in his first contribution. Uh hang on, I'm just seeing what the issue with the timer is. I don't know what's going on here. And the cheers are over. No, they're not. They're going back for the I think it was a penalty here, so I was just sorting out the timer. I'm not sure, sure that, where that went, but there we go. It's back on the screen there now. So, a penalty for the Cheetahs. Trying to decide what to do. They're going for poles. Cheetahs are going for poles. I don't like that, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a warm-up game, basically. I understand you want to get the win, and I suppose that's part of preparing is trying how to see out a game, but... Had a bit of momentum. Go for the try. Keep us all interested. Do it for the fans. Come on, France. Please do smash a like on the video if you haven't already. We're seeing on 11 likes. See if we can get up to 15 by the end of the game. Please also do subscribe to the channel. We're on what? 1,076 subscribers. Can we kind of get to 1,080? So if four people that are currently watching can subscribe, we'll hit the 1,080 the mark, which would be really cool. No problem there from France State. He moves the Cheetahs up to 36 points to 31. So, a try by the Sharks still puts them ahead. They've got 15 minutes to get inside the Cheetahs' half and to try and find their way over that white line. Leibok, that's the perfect restart. They don't get the save to 22. It's nice and deep. So the Cheetahs won't be able to kick this out in the full. Almost held up there, but he managed to get it off um, to Honest Van der Merber. So, Carl Stan will not kick it ahead. Can't kick it out because he doesn't have to save 22. Leibok is well positioned, though. He shapes the kick as well. He's going to go high. Apple Lefassi is the man chasing. He's very good under the high ball. If he gets there first, very good contest for him and Clayton Blomikis. Jamie Ward wins it. Back for the Sharks. Jaden Hendricks, uh, pressure on him, but he manages to keep it. The Fulmer get come off. Cock now. Bit of a hospital pass there, but he manages to deal with it well. Mkunu, now that's a very nice run there. He hands off Minus Van der Merwe. No easy feat, I'll tell you that much. Debuff tries to chip ahead. It works out for him. He's through. Ooh, and Gumeni's going to go over. The Sharks are over. Under the poles. They'll go ahead. Marnie Debuff has completely changed this game on its head. What a substitution. What an impact player. Gumeni, the man, you, you guessed the try. He came on for James Fenton. Peter Gumeni. Came on in about 30th minute, I think. But it's all Leibok. A very flat defensive line. Tries to go for the chip, which gets chased down. But does ricochet back into him ahead. He gets that. Pops it out to Gumeda. He's got the pace. And a desperate tackle there from Dries Swanepoel. But he can't. I'm probably sorry from Chris Smith. But he can't make it. And Gumeda is over with the kick to come right in front of the poles. And Moni Leibok will add the two extras. And they should go ahead with just under, just over 10 minutes to play.
No issues there. Sharks 38 36. They go ahead for the first time since about the 10th minute. They scored first and they finally managed to claw their way back into this game. What an absolute scorcher of a match. 38 points to 36. More than 70 points in it so far. Peyton Gromicki is there down for cramp. He's, uh, he's off the field now. Howard Amnesia replaced him, came onto the bench there. I need about definitely starting at 10 next week. Well, I don't think Jordan Chad made a very good impression on himself, to be honest. So, yeah, I reckon we probably will see Levok at 10 unless we see the return of the regulars and we see Kerr and Bosch back in the lineup. Um, I think it is Sharks versus Stormers next week. Um, next week, I mean, from next week, we've now we've then got the Rainbow Cup sides play against us. So, next week, Friday, we've got the Sharks versus the Bulls, Stormers versus the Lions. Sorry, I lied. Next week, Friday, Bulls versus Stormers, yeah, Lions versus Sharks, um, and then the Stormers versus the Lions and the Sharks versus the Bulls the week after that. So, yeah, I think we might start seeing um, the, the the usuals back in the back in the matches, back in the starting lineup for those matches. Doesn't look good for Aiden Blomick. He's just been helped to a seat. Uh, time is off, so let me just fix that as well. Right. Just 12, less than 12 minutes left in the game. Who are we backing? Sharks have got the edge for now, but cheaters are in some good territory, but it's a penalty towards the Sharks. They'll be able to keep themselves out of trouble. Right, not in a rush to take this. Monty Levok will try and get a side all as far down the field as possible. And he finds touch inside the cheetah's half, actually. It's a very nice kick by Monty Levok. He's been brilliant. The first half was all about Ruan Pinar. The second half is all about Monty Levok. Right, 10 minutes left, 10 minutes left. The Sharks score, that should be the game done, but it, we can't afford to concede. They win the line out, they've got the driving more going. They've got an advantage as well, so a bit of license here for the Sharks. Jane Hedrickson goes over the top. That was always going to end up in one way. They win the, the penalty, and once again, Mike Leobock will be able to kick them further downfield. The 13th penalty he has conceded. So, yeah, I think discipline just letting them down a little bit. Um, really kind of allowed the Sharks to get back into the game. But they've blown quite a big lead. I mean, they're 28 points to 7 up. So, to have blown that lead and to have made it this close is a bit poor from the Cheaters. It does, however, make some really good watching. So, as a neutral, I'm not complaining. More of this. So, a very, very good game. A really nice competition. Sharks literally on the 22. But they lose the line line. That's another line line lost by Fez and Barty. He needs to sort that aspect of his game out. The Chiefs are keeping it in hand. It's some very good hands now. Duncan Saul out of the back. He almost struggles with Moy Leibach, who does bring him down eventually. But now we see a kick from Fran Stein. No, he sees some space. He goes through the middle. It's a great tackle by Jaden Hendricks. Really did front up against Fran Stein. And he was trying to win the ball back, but in doing so, illegally, so Hendrickson could see the penalty. And once now this offers the Cheetahs a chance to go down to the other end of the field. In for a fantastic end here, I think. Brown Stain will now put this to the boot. Uh, 
uh, can't decide what the time is. Right, so it's a good kick here from Van Staten. They found touch about five meters short of the 22. So, can the Cheetahs strike back? Can they win the game? They've been the better side, I think, largely over the game. It's been an admirable fight back by the by the Sharks, but very much against the run of play. I think two tries, you could argue, almost three against the run of play. Ooh, that's not bounced particularly well, but that's very well picked up eventually. Keon May doing very well there from the line up there. Cheetahs have still got possession. Trying to find their way into the 22. Ooh, we've got France State in the pocket. Going. That's off to the right. And I'm not sure it's the right decision, you know. No, I think it was a little bit premature, to be honest. I think that they had some momentum. They had some time. They had eight minutes. Why rush it? Why rush it? I don't think that was the best decision by, by France Dame, but it is what it is. The Sharks will restart with 22. And I'm sure Money Lee is going to go very, very deep here. No, he goes short to the side. And I mean, why? I mean, you can put your hands on the head as much as you want, Money Leibach. You, you've got seven minutes to try and defend the lead. Why give them a line out? Well, you can give them a chance at a line out inside your half. Kick that deep. Make them try and kick back. Could you win the territory game there? Money Leibach going short here. And she just won the line out now, about, what, 10 meters shy of the, of the 22. And they've gifted them another opportunity to attack them. So, yeah, it's a very strange decision. Both teams here, yeah, I think, guilty of not making the right calls. And the Cheers line has functioned very well. They haven't missed a man once and once again. Fortain spots a gap. Fraunstein gets through, but Werner Koch is there, backtracking. Fortain, how on Misi? That's a nice little pop-out to Chris Smith. Ooh, it almost looked like going straight off your feet there from the Sharks. Big counteract from the Sharks. She just can't get that out. And it has been counteract. That is brilliant from the Sharks. When they need it the most, Timbalani body pick up and go as well. Oh, and he's been knocked it on. Uh, knock on. We're going to move back, surely. That's a brilliant steal by, by the Sharks. Saw the opportunity with Chris Smith. was driven backwards and they started, players started piling in. They've won the ball back. It is a knock on, so it will be a cheater scrum. But very good from the Sharks. Really are doing well to slow the game down here. A good tackle by Fez and Barty. He gets up and... There are just not enough cheetahs players there. I mean, it's Duncan Sol and Harold Misi and the forwards start piling in. Mark Kumbara is immense there. Right, so it's a line-up for the cheetahs. They're going to try to set up a rolling more here. But it hasn't really worked out for them. Minus one of the peels off the side. Shrugs off one. Shrugs off two. They now goes himself. He gets past the halfway line. Less than five minutes for the Cheetahs to try and score. Or get a penalty within the half. Oh, it's a very nice little step inside there by Harb Nisi. He gets the pop away. But Tang gets up to the 10 meter. And it's a penalty. It's a penalty. Is there another twist in the tail here? Right, and when France Stein has the kicking tee in his hand, he's going to try and kick this over, put the cheaters ahead, and then they're going to have to try and defend for a couple of minutes. To be fair, he's got, what, 52 seconds left to take the penalty, so that'll take them up to about 77 minutes. So by the time they kick off, they'll probably have about three minutes, just under three minutes to try and defend. So providing this goes over, it's the right call. Now, see, here is where I don't mind going for polls. You know, right at the end, trying to get win the game. Um, don't really want to see it earlier than sort of, you know, 70 minutes, really. Um, you want to see society rugby as much as you can. All right, 17 seconds. Here he goes. Distance never an issue. But it looks like it's gone off to the right. He's missed it. He's missed it. Is that the ball game? 
Sharks now got what three minutes, ten seconds to defend. He apologizes to his team. Does Brian Stain? He had the distance, just didn't quite have the accuracy. Shaving off to the right. And now, surely, Monty Leibok, you've got to kick this deep. And he does. So, Roscoe Spitman picks up. He goes infield to Chris Smith. He's going to keep the ball in hand, yeah. Back to the blind side. Harlan Nisi's there. Tucker Abraham's the nice tackle. A lot of work here for the Cheetahs to get back into the Sharks half and to try to get out of his. That's very good. Open Mahoja. He picks up there. Good tackle by Timbalani Body. He's been good all night. Oh, it's a good read there by Chris Smith. Lots of very quick up the line on the Sharks at the moment, but Cheetah's doing well. They're reading it nicely. Renner for 10, carries up nicely. He gets up to about the 10 meters line. She's making progress. It's slow, but it's steady. That's a high tackle. They've got an advantage there, the Cheetahs. It's a bit of license to do whatever they want. And the whistle goes. Right. <laughs> Decision time. Two minutes to go. Does France stay back his boot? Sean Everett can't believe it. Sorry, that time is not correct. There we go. That's correct. Right, France State has got his kicking key out again. This for the win. It is further inside. It is an easier kick in theory. But in theory, never won a game. To be fair, I think the Cheetahs deserve this. If this goes over, I think it's a very, very fair result. It's very close. It's very harsh on the Sharks. But I think, by and large, if we had stats to go look at, uh, which we don't, I think you'd probably see the Cheetahs overall with a better side. The line-out functioned pretty well. The scrum was pretty even. The Sharks started to get a bit of ascendancy, but genuinely it was quite, quite even. Looks like a better kick. The flags are up. The Cheetahs are ahead. 39 points to 38 Seconds remain. Seconds remain. All the cheaters have to do as Fran Stain pulls up with some cramp. They all the cheaters need to do is to take this ball cleanly. They've got three seconds to wind this down. If they can catch the ball from the kickoff. Competitive kick. I believe Fassi goes up. The ball's a bit everywhere. But the cheaters have won it back. 19 seconds. 18 seconds. This should be the cheaters game. Eight seconds, eight seconds. This is the phase they need. All they have to retain is now three seconds. This should be it. One more phase. They should kick it out and they're done. Bit of a counteract there from the Sharks. Goes back to France Day. He's been brilliant all night. He kicks it out. And that's a fantastic victory by the Cheetahs. What a match over rugby. Brilliant stuff. Their heartbreak for the Sharks. who really did have a brilliant fight back. But I think overall the Cheetahs deserved it. They were the better side um, in the end. And a very, very good game. So, yeah. Please do smash a like on the video before I go. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. We'll have a review up nice and shortly after this as well. And we'll do a bit of a review of the entire preparation series fixtures that we've seen over the past two days thank you very much for jumping on the stream and joining me have a very good evening and i'll see you guys next time as always my name is steven and thank you for watching